we doing tonight? We're doing okay? Doing all right? Awesome. I love that last song. Love all of them. It's great. Uh, and I'm also going to have you move this speaker to the left as well. Thanks, brother. Give it up for Sean Gavers, everybody. What a man. What a man. All right. All right. Everybody repeat after me. Love. love. Sex. <laughs> Dating. Dating. Awesome. One more time. Love. love. Sex. Sex. Dating. Dating. Awesome. We are um, super excited about the... Um, next few weeks together, I believe that this is an important conversation and dialogue to begin. And we want it to be a conversation. We want it to be participatory. If that's a word, it's a great word. And I want you to get on your phone right now if you have Instagram, okay? If you have Instagram, get on your phone. Sorry, some of you feel left out. But if you have Instagram, get on your phone. Seriously, right now. I'm being dead serious. It shouldn't be hard, okay? Um, I want you to get it, and then I want you to go to OBCC underscore students, okay? This isn't trying to boost followers, although if you're not following us, give us a follow. We'll try and give you a follow back, okay? And you all need to go to our story, okay? Once you get there, go to our story. I know you guys are fast, so you're probably already there. And you'll see where we say ask any question you want to ask in regards to love, sex, dating, lust, all the, all the above, okay? The only person who's going to be able to see the question is me, and nothing is off limits. So take about a minute or two and submit a question, okay? Anything that comes to mind in regards to love, sex, and dating, we aren't going to deal with them tonight, but the third week of this series, we're going to have a question and response with some of our leaders, okay? And so I want you guys to ask those questions. I'll give you a minute or two to do that, and then we're going to dive in. going. Leaders, if you think there would be some good questions to tackle for your students, we would love for you guys to send in some questions as well. All right. Once you're done with that, put your phone away, unless you're going to take notes for the rest of the talk, okay? It's not going to be super long, um, but don't be searching on your apps and different things during this talk. I believe it's an important discussion, and I think small groups could be really good, but you got to hear what's being said in order to have a conversation about it. Sound good? Everybody done? Or is anybody still, anybody, raise your hand if you're still writing a question, still sending in. Okay. All right. There's a couple of you. We're going to continue on. And here's, here's why we're doing this, okay? Here's why we're doing this series. It's pretty simple. We have to talk about this stuff, okay? We, we have to talk about this, all right? We, we do. I think that's a slide, actually. We, we literally have to talk about this. It's, it's important. And here's why. If we don't talk about it, if we don't look at the scriptures and what we believe God says about love, sex, or dating, you're going to hear about it from somebody else. You are. You're going to hear about it from culture. You might learn about sex um, from Netflix shows, literally. You might learn about dating from pop culture. You might learn about dating from silly middle school and high school relationships around you. You're going to hear about it. You're going to hear about it on the commercials. You're going to see pictures. You're going you're gonna, to you know, learn about it from friends that are talking on the bus or whatever it is in the locker room. You're going to learn. And most of the information out there is very silly. Okay? Most of the information out there, I would even go as far as to say, is really, really dangerous. And if you're led astray by the information that you see on Netflix and pop culture and Hollywood and all these different things, it's going to be very damaging to, to, to your life in regards to love, sex, and dating, okay? And so I want you guys to lean in. I want you guys to be here for all three weeks. I think it's important. We're going to be real. We're going to talk about stuff. This week, not quite as much, but we're going to go very kind of in-depth into some of these things, okay? So tell your parents to come. Our goal is to kind of help bring about a dialogue between you and your parents and all these different things because, again, we have to talk about it. It's that important. Okay, love, sex, and dating. And tonight, we're actually focusing on a word that's not even in the title of the series, okay? But that word, I believe, is massively important to all three categories of love, sex, and dating. I do. And we're going to talk about this word right here, singleness. Singleness. We're going to talk about singleness. Um, did, did, you, did we wrap that gift? No big deal if not. No big deal. Okay, that's all right. I just won't have it. Um, but we're going to talk about we're going to talk about 
singleness, okay? And I want, I, want, I want to give you guys a couple moments. Again, this is going to kind of be interactive. I want you guys to think about what you think about when you hear that word. Like, what do you think about when you think about singleness? What comes to mind when the topic of singleness gets brought up, okay? And as I've been reading a book, for those of you who are older, especially in the room, um, high school students, maybe college students, leaders, if you're in high school, I think it would be helpful as well. I didn't, not really much of the information from the talk is from this, but this was a really good resource, I think, titled Not Yet Married by a guy named Marshall Siegel. I think it's really helpful to, to navigate through singleness again. We don't talk much about it tonight, but some of the ideas come from that. And kind of in my own reflection, as I've been praying about it and thinking about singleness, real quick, how many of y'all are single? How many of y'all are single? Okay, <laughs> let's go, right? Look around. Yeah. <laughs> I started thinking about this. What you think about when you think about singleness is probably dependent on how old you are, large in part. Large in part to the season of life that you're in. If you're in middle school, if you're a middle school dude, middle school girl, you might just be like, I'm pretty apathetic. I, I, I don't really care, right? Like, like not many people have boyfriends or girlfriends. I'm pretty content. It's just not that big of a deal. I don't even really think about it very much, okay? Or maybe you're just like, is there any way I can see the next slide as well? If not, no big deal. Uh, maybe you're like, it's just an opportunity to do whatever I want. It's an opportunity to do whatever I want. Like, I'm not worried about a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I can play video games all day, every day. I don't have to worry about Snapchatting and texting and making sure my girl or my boyfriend is, is, is good. Or maybe you're like, it's an opportunity to flirt with anybody that I think is cute. It's just an opportunity to flirt, right? Like, I'm not exclusive with anybody, so I'm going to be real inclusive. All are welcome, right? Like, I'm going to flirt with all the girls. I'm going to flirt with all the dudes. Is there any possible way I can see the next slide, like, to where I have them side to side? It's going to be really helpful. No? Okay, I'll be looking at my computer. All right, here we go. Sweet. Um, maybe you're like, it's just a time to search. It's a, it's a time to search. Like, Maybe you're in the season where you got friends who have boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever, and I think this is applicable to all ages, and you're like, you see every guy through the filter of like boyfriend material or not boyfriend material, you know? You see all the girls through the filter of, yeah, maybe I date her or maybe I wouldn't, okay? And I'm not saying that's necessarily, eh, maybe I am. I'm not saying it's like a horrible, horrible thing, especially if you're older and you're like, I kind of want to get married or whatever, or you're in college or you're late in high school, you're like, maybe I'm ready to date. And if you want to do that, I'm not saying you can't look, but I think looking at times leads to this, where it's just a time to want, and I think that's dangerous. Where it's like, now it's not just you're looking, but you're kind of dissatisfied with where you're at. And so the season of your life, it feels like it's just kind of empty and you're missing something. And the scriptures say that when you're confident in your relationship with Jesus, like the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not covet, I shall not look at other people like, man, I wish I was there. Okay, and I think wanting, I think coveting something that you don't have, being envious of something that you don't have, might lead you to think singleness is brutal. Like, like maybe that's you. As high school students, seriously, you got friends, you got boyfriends and girlfriends, and you're like, it just is, it's, it's brutal. I don't really like it very much. It's more fun when I have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or at least someone I'm texting or whatever, you know, which we're talking about that next week. Quit saying, you know, we're, we're talking, we're texting, we're Snapchatting. I hate that, okay? Like, I don't think that's very, I don't think that's very healthy, okay? So anyways, all right? Maybe, that, maybe that's kind of what you think about when you think about singleness. But I don't necessarily think that's what the scriptures teach when it comes to singleness. All right. And again, if you're in middle school in the room and you're already checking out, you're like, I don't really care. I want you guys to lean in because there might be a time period where this changes. And just keep this in your back pocket. I think it's going to be helpful. Okay. So the Bible teaches that singleness is a gift. Singleness is a gift from God, to which many of you say, especially the older ones in the room, say, easy for you to say, you're married. You're married. And when you weren't married, you were pretty much dating consistently since you were like 14 years old. It's easy for you to say, okay? To which I would say, busted, right, on all counts, okay? I think that might be a legitimate thought. But I also would challenge you with the fact that I don't know if you should really shoot the message because of the messenger. In fact, this guy who wrote this book about singleness, about not being married, 
he got a lot of the same slack because he's married. And so people were like, you know, it's always the married people and the people who have a boyfriend or girlfriend who talk about how Jesus is enough, right? It's always the married people who get up there and say, God is your source, you should be content, you don't need a boyfriend or girlfriend. But little did they know, most of this book was written when he was single. <laughs> so I would just encourage you, I believe that this is truth, and so don't check out because you're like, this guy's out of touch, he's married, you know, this, that, the other. And besides, the guy who talks most about singleness being a gift was a single dude in the scriptures. His name was Paul. He's a single guy. Okay, and then there's a guy named Solomon, and we actually talked about this morning, and we're going to talk a little, give some of his teachings later on this evening as well. He says this, there's a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the sun. Okay, so there's a time for everything, there's a season for everything, and then just a couple verses later, he says, God makes all of that beautiful. God makes everything beautiful. The scriptures teach that this season of life that you're in in middle school or high school or college or in leadership or if you're an adult in the room and you're just coming to check this out, the scriptures teach that it is a gift from God, a season that is beautiful, okay? It's a gift. It's a gift. And, and, and I, when I think about a gift, I literally practically think about a wrapped present. That's what comes to mind, okay? My birthday is coming up in just a couple weeks, and I'm getting older to the point where I really honestly don't care that much about gifts. But if I get one, I'm going to open it. Like, if I get the gift, I'm going to open it. I'm not going to give it back to the giver and say, I don't want it. I don't want the gift. But for many of us, if we're being honest at all different stages, singleness is really just like an unwrapped gift where we're like, I don't want it. I, I don't want it. I want a boyfriend. I want a girlfriend, okay? Like some of you, you don't even look at it. Some of you, you didn't even know that that was the case. Some of you never heard that singleness is a gift from God. You're like, I want a boyfriend. I want a girlfriend. How is this a gift? Okay? But some of you, if we're being even more honest, you've opened the gift. You've, you've looked at it, and you're like, I don't like it. It's like my little niece Tallulah. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's when we give her food she doesn't like. I don't like it. Right? Like you've, you've looked in the gift and you're like, eh, I don't really want that. I want the other gift. I want a boyfriend. I want a girlfriend. I want a husband. I want a wife. Okay? It's funny. Tallulah's birthday and Christmas, they're right next to each other. So she gets all these gifts. And it got to the point where she had opened so many gifts, she would open it and she'd look at it. She'd smile for a second and be like, I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. So she would open it, but she wouldn't enjoy it. She would open it, but she wouldn't really experience it. And I think for many of us, no matter what stage of life you're in, which is why I'm excited about this series, I think that's many of us in regards to singleness. But in order to enjoy love, sex, and dating the way that God intended you to enjoy it, you need to find joy in singleness first. I believe that. I do. I believe that. And I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. And I'm not saying there are going to be times where you're like, I kind of want a boyfriend. I kind of want a girlfriend. I'm not saying that's an evil thought. I'm not saying it's a bad thought. I'm not saying it. But I'm saying you need to find joy in the season that God has you. And you need to be faithful where you are right now. We could say it this way. In order to maximize dating and marriage, you need to maximize single, singleness first. Okay? I believe that. You, you need to take advantage of it. And so, so, so and, and here's, here's why. Do you see this building? Do you see this building right here? Do you know when they built this structure, do you, know what they, do you know what they laid first? The ground, yeah. The foundation, right? They laid the foundation. Sorry if you said that. I wasn't making fun of you. It just made me laugh, okay? Like, they laid the foundation. And here's why. Without a good foundation, without a good structure, all of it comes tumbling down. And I believe that singleness is the foundation that I believe can either hold your dating your marriage life up down the road, or I think if you don't build a good foundation, it's going to come crashing down, okay? And so we're going to give some, some really practical advice on singleness, okay? And so the first thing that I want to say is this. Develop great friendships. Develop great friendships. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago. We have our phones and it's fun, it's good on one hand, you know, like we're really connected, we build some friendships, and we might even build some intimacy and all these different things with people. But I would say it's fake a lot of times, and it's inauthentic, okay? A Snapchat of your hair or your knee saying, sup, 
keep the street going, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm out of touch on Snapchat. I don't know what you guys do. But I know that your pictures are silly. I'll look over. I'm like, what, why did you send that? That was a picture of the wall, right? But, but I think a lot of times we're like talking to people so much. But really, it's not, it's not deep. It's not, it's not great friendship. It's, I believe a lot of times it's fake friendship, okay? But I believe you desire more than that. I believe your soul desires more than kind of how your generation experiences friendship at times. I do, okay? And the reason you need to develop great friendship is this. I believe that you can be relationally fulfilled and secure without a boyfriend or girlfriend. So middle schooler or high schooler, to be really practical, okay, you don't need a boyfriend or girlfriend. You, you don't need one. I'm not going to come in here and say, you got to break up, okay? Maybe we'll do that next week. I'm kidding. We probably won't do that. But anyways, like, 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 I think you can be relationally secure, okay, satisfied without a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And think about it. Why would you want a boyfriend or girlfriend? What are some of the reasons that you would want a boyfriend or girlfriend? Let's throw a few of them up on the screen. Affection. You want to feel loved, valued, comfort, kindness, guidance, protection, security, correction, prayer, hospitality, fun, joy, all these different things, okay? Okay. But do you know in the New Testament, I could have listed a ton of things that you would say, this is why I want a boyfriend or, gr or a girlfriend. But do you know the New Testament talks about those words in regards to normal friendships? Say, you can, you can experience all of those things in the context of great friendships, specifically inside the body of Christ. Specifically inside the church. We could say it this way. Oftentimes our desire for a boyfriend or a girlfriend is really just our desire for a great friend. And if that's the case, if that's the case, we all as the church, look at me on this, middle schoolers and high schoolers, as Jesus followers, if you want to follow Jesus, leaders, me, myself included, we have a great responsibility to be great friends. We have a responsibility to love people, to encourage one another, to pray for one another, to give affection to one another, to check in on one another, to build one another up. We have a responsibility to be great friends to where your friends who are single, who don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend, to where, yeah, they might be single, but they aren't alone. They don't feel like they're alone. Oftentimes, oftentimes, I believe, I believe we, we, we struggle in that. Regard, and I think we need to, to work on it. Next, great friendships provide great practice for love, sex, and dating. Okay, and here's, here's what I mean by this, okay? I believe that if Scripture speaks highly of singleness, which it does, we shouldn't think of it as like a means to an end. I got to do this because one day I'm going to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. You're always thinking about that. I'm not saying that, but we also need to be realistic in the fact that many of you want to date eventually. Many of you want to be married eventually, so you're probably going to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. And so developing great friendships is great practice because really great dating relationships and great marriages are just great friendships, okay? Right? Like, like great marriages are great friendships with some awesome benefits that you can't experience outside of marriage, I believe that. It's a great friendship. It is. And so you, you guys can practice communicating with one another face to face, right? You aren't going to be Snapchatting your wife. You aren't going to be Snapchatting your fiance or your serious boyfriend or girlfriend. It's going to be deeper than that. So great, real face to face friendships, you can practice communication. You can practice forgiving one another. You can practice apologizing to one another. You need to develop great friendships and you need to develop healthy friendships with the opposite sex. I believe that. You need to develop healthy friendships with the opposite sex because you know what scripture teaches? Scripture teaches that in the body of Christ, if you're a girl, the dudes, they're your brothers. Like, guys, guys, the girls, they're your sisters in Christ. And I think at times inside the church, I've been guilty of this. I've been a horrible sibling. <laughs> we've, been, we've been bad siblings. Like, with me and my four sisters, if I never said hi, if I never checked in, hey, how you doing? I value you. I value your friendship. I'm not saying that there's not wisdom involved. But I think at times, like if I didn't do that, I would be a horrible brother. And I think at times I've been convicted of I have sisters in the body of Christ that I need to be a great brother to. Okay? And so just think about that. 
All right, it's something to think about. Really, I think the main thing that you need to hear in your singleness is this, okay? Develop great friendships and resist isolation. Resist it. Resist it. Do not go into your phone or do not go into your room and play video games by yourself all of the time. Girls, don't distance yourself from friendships because of something that someone did or whatever. You got to stay in relationship with people. You have to. And here's why. The proverb writer says this. Whoever isolates himself or herself seeks his or her own desire. He or she breaks out against all sound judgment. When, you, when, you, when you're by yourself all of the time, when you distance yourself from healthy friendships, especially inside of the church, okay, you become selfish, and then, and then Solomon says you become kind of stupid too, okay? Like you become kind of silly. You make some really, really silly decisions, okay? It's really true. We've seen this, I'm sure you've seen this, where someone detaches themselves from friendships and they make really, really bad decisions in regards to love, sex, and dating. So get yourself some really gracious and kind and loving friends, but make sure they're friends who are willing to tell you the truth. Make sure they're friends who are willing to say, hey, I probably wouldn't go there. Probably wouldn't do that. Probably watch out there. It's that important. Second thing is this, attempt great things. Attempt great things. And here's... Here's why, okay? I want you guys to think about this. This is kind of fun to dream about, all right? If you had a ton of time to attempt something great for God and the world around you, what would you do? Take 30 seconds just to think about that. If you had a ton of time to attempt something great for God and the world around you, what would you attempt? Dream big for a second. What would you do? What would you do? And let me challenge you with this thought. If you're single, especially, if, we're, if you're dating, you might too, but if you're single especially, <laughs> you might have enough time to attempt what you just thought about. I would challenge you with this reality. You probably have enough time to attempt what you just thought about. I believe that. The scriptures talk about how dating is distracting. Some of you guys know this. Some of you guys know this. He talks about marriage, but in light of what we're talking about here, y'all ain't going to get married when you're 14. We ain't going to allow that junk, right? So dating. It's going to be distracting. And you guys know this. Those of you guys have had boyfriends or girlfriends, you're always thinking about it. You're thinking about the text. You're thinking about the next time you get to hang out. You're thinking about the Snapchat. You're thinking about this. You're thinking about that. You're thinking about that. And it would probably be weird if you weren't. That's really natural. If you're married, okay, it's great. It's a, it's a beautiful distraction, but it's distracting. It's true. Your spouse is on your mind. You got to think about, so it's not just you anymore. I, I coach seventh grade basketball, and I love it so much. I, co I coach the Oakville middle school team, and we've had a lot of fun, and I have some really, really good kids, and, and, and I've loved developing relationships with them, but really they aren't super deep relationships because we haven't been together very much. But it's a lot of fun. I love being in that context with kids. I feel like I'm kind of in my element. I, I, I really, really, really enjoy it, okay? And it doesn't take up a ton of time. At the beginning of the season, it's two nights out of the week, two weeknights, and then I, I have some time on the weekends at times playing games. That's a lot. It's a lot. Now, it's, it settles into where it's like two hours on a weeknight, and then I play a game or two on the weekend. It's very manageable, a and I love it. And this week, okay, I got a couple rougher emails when we were losing at the beginning of the year, but I got a couple nice emails this week, and it felt really good. It's like you've impacted my son a lot. Feels, he, he's a lot more confident. He's enjoying himself. He's learned a lot. It's been really good. And, and, and I'm not saying that to brag. I, I see a lot of my leader friends here, and when you're in the workplace, it's just what you're supposed to do as Jesus follower. You impact people, and there are a lot of you in here doing a lot better than me. But I, I, loved, I loved the email, and at the end of one of the emails, they were like, we, we appreciate it so much. We would love for you to do training in the spring, and we'd love for you to coach him in the summer. And honestly, with work in mind, with the summer programs in mind, with what I want to do with my little brother Colby and some of his buddies in the off season, and more than anything, it's what I want to do in strengthening my friendships and relationships in the church, and most importantly, my marriage, my answer is going to be no. No. I, I don't have the time to do that. I don't have the wherewithal to do that. I, I, just, I just can't do it this spring and summer. And some of you guys who are married, some of you guys who are in a serious dating relationship, you guys know what my answer would be if I wasn't married. It would be... Mm hmm And it's great. It's a beautiful trade. Obviously, you're amazing. I love my wife. But it's a reality. 
It's a reality. You have the most time you will ever have right now if you're single, you do. It's true. And so I want to ask you the question, middle schooler or high schooler, are you making the most of your time? Leader, are you making the most of your time? Are you pouring into the church? Are you having time, having fun and developing your gifts and your talents to where eventually, to where eventually you can use those to, to make more of a difference for the kingdom of God? Are you chasing after some God-sized dreams? Are you taking some time to attempt great things? Are you serving at different places? What, are you taking advantage of your time? School, in your school, join FCA. Join FCA, join the groups. Get involved, take advantage of it. You have a lot of time. You have a lot of time, especially if you're single. Okay, next, you need to think great thoughts. You need to think great thoughts. This is so important, okay? And here's, and here's why. Here's why. Scripture teaches that, that, that your thoughts determine the direction of your life. Scripture teaches that what goes on in here, what goes on in here eventually makes its way out there. It's true. And so you need to think great thoughts, and I'm going to just go real quick here. You need to think great thoughts about the opposite sex. Guys, girls, you need to think great thoughts about the opposite sex. And dudes, middle school dudes, high school dudes, adults in the room. Look me in the eye, okay? These girls in this room, the girls that maybe, just maybe, you're looking at on a screen, the girls in the videos, the girls in the pictures, the girls that you're tempted to ask for a Snapchat picture that you know you shouldn't ask for, she's, she's your sister. <laughs> in the kingdom of God, she's your sister. She's your sister in Christ. Scripture gives two categories, guys, for, for the girls in your life. One, sister in Christ. Two, wife. That's it. It's what we see. It's what we see. And, and let's be honest. If you have a sister, if you have a younger sister, if you have an older sister, you want to honor them. You want to treat them with dignity and respect. You want to make sure that nobody is trying to take advantage of them. You want to make sure that they feel valued and cherished. You want to make sure that they aren't dehumanized or taken advantage of. You do. You do. In the kingdom of God, if you're a Jesus follower, she is your sister in Christ. Next, I threw this in there just for the fun of it. But she's another man's daughter. Okay? She is. I wasn't going to put that in there. I didn't put that in there the past few years, and we haven't talked about this much, but just think about it. You don't have a kid yet as a middle school or a high school, but one day you will, and you don't want dudes thinking those thoughts about your girl. Some parents in the room right now, their blood's boiling just thinking about it. It's true. And more importantly than that, she's God's daughter. She's, she's God's daughter. This is what we believe about the girls, again, that you're tempted to look at, that you're tempted to lust over, that you're tempted to commit adultery in your own heart with, that this is what we believe. And we believe that God sees your thoughts. We believe that God knows your thoughts. We believe that God knows your heart. And I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to scare you. There should be a healthy fear and a healthy reverence for the fact that God, God knows. God knows what's going on. And obviously, if it's God's daughter, they should be treated with dignity and respect. And then maybe more important than all of this, she's, she's a human being. She's human. She's human. Every person you come eyeball to eyeball with is a human being. And if they're a human being, they're made in the image of God. And if they're made in the image of God, they're worthy of dignity and respect. And then hear me on this. Pornography. Pornography makes it impossible to think great thoughts about the opposite sex. It makes it impossible to think great thoughts about the opposite sex. Scrolling through and lusting over pictures on your social media feeds makes it impossible to think great thoughts about the opposite sex. Getting pictures sent to you on Snapchat that you know are not okay to receive makes it impossible to think great thoughts about the opposite sex. Do you know what pornography teaches you? Statistics show some of us are watching it. Pornography teaches you this. It's very simple. The opposite sex is just an object to be used for your own enjoyment. Let's call it like it is. Let's call it like it is. You aren't watching that video saying this is a human being that's made in the image of God, that's worthy of dignity and respect. You aren't trying to give love, you're trying to get lust is what you're trying to get. 
okay? So think about it. Reflect on it. It has the potential to do massive, massive damage in your life. Girls, you're not off the hook. He's your brother. He's somebody's son. He's God's son. And he's human. It's just something to think about. When you're thinking thoughts, it's not just, it's, it, 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 it's not just the dudes here. I remember in high school, it wasn't just the guys. It wasn't just the guys. I remember text messages that were sent. I, I, I remember. And so it's just something to think about. And hear me on this. This is going to be uh, a little more challenging. Okay. If you have a boyfriend... And he's, and he's hooked on pornography, break up with him. Guys, if you have a girlfriend and she's hooked on pornography, break up with her. There's not a ring on your finger. You're not committed to that. Get out of it. Break up with him. So maybe down the road, that's out of there. I'm, I'll, 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 maybe we'll think about it. Okay? If you like a guy, you're like, he's good looking. He's fun. He thinks I'm cute, right? You know, it's fun. I would, I would maybe... <laughs> I would maybe investigate a little bit as to what he's spending his time doing in regards to his thoughts about the opposite sex. And if you find out that he's watching this stuff, don't date him. Guys, same for you. A lot hangs in the balance. And so in regards to the thoughts that you're thinking, okay, there are just a few practical things. We're flying through this. Ask for accountability. Ask for accountability. Ask for help, okay? Ask for help. Ask for some people to help you. Guys, we have some people, we have some people in this church, we have some people in this room who have taken great steps. I mean, extraordinary steps. Steps where I'm like, that's, that's, that's brave, that's courageous, that is absolutely extraordinary. Saying, hey, hey, we're gonna set some, we're gonna set some restrictions on my phone to where I can't go to that website, and you're gonna have access to it. You're gonna have access to it, leader. You're gonna have access to it, parent. I'm gonna be courageous enough to let you know what I'm looking at, because I need help. That's brave. That's courageous. That is worth applauding for. That is extraordinary. You are contending for something that is more important than you know. It's huge. So ask for accountability. Next, watch who you follow on the stuff. Watch who you follow. Watch who you follow. If it's causing you to think thoughts that are not great about the opposite sex, stop following them. Okay, next. What's the next one we got? Stay off your phone late at night. Okay, just keep it out of your room. Just try and keep it out of your room. It's really practical, but it's true. If, if, if you ask the, the, the people who struggle with these different thoughts on their phones, it happens at night when they're alone in their room with their phone. Okay? And then it's really simple. It, it all is summed down. What, watch what goes in here. Watch what comes into your mind. It's kind of just repeating myself with what I'm saying. But the movies, watch it. Be careful. TV shows, watch it. Be careful. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. Guard your thoughts. Next, think great thoughts about yourself. Think great thoughts about yourself. And look at me. Look at me. This is, this is why I love teaching on love, sex, and dating, okay? Maybe more than anything, okay? You need to be confident. You need to be confident in the reality that you are valuable and loved and cherished. You're marked. You're sealed by Almighty God who says you are loved and cared for and more valuable than you know. Essentially, you just need to be confident in general. Be, be confident. Be confident. Understand that I'm a daughter of the king. Understand as a high school dude that my worth doesn't come from what girls think about me or what the other dudes are saying about me. It comes from God and God alone. And when you're confident in who you are, you are much less likely to send the pictures when you're confident in who you are, you are much less likely in doing things that you know you shouldn't do to get approval from people, especially of the opposite sex. You need to be confident in who you are. A lot of horrible mistakes in love, sex, and dating stem from really insecure thoughts. I don't deserve, I don't deserve God's best for me. I don't deserve a great guy. I don't deserve a great girl very insecure thoughts where you're not secure in who you are, you don't feel accepted and loved and approved by God, you're not confident in that, and so you go and seek it from the opposite sex and you do some things that eventually you regret, okay? And then next, it's one of my favorite parts of every year, be confident in the reality that you are not defined by what you did. 
Please be confident in that. My greatest fear in talks like this is that you walk out of here feeling shame and guilt and regret and saying, I blew it. I think terrible thoughts. I'm never going to recover. I'm not worth, I'm relationally dysfunctional. I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy of that. Stop. That's not the gospel message. It's contrary to it. It's not who you are. It's not who you are. You've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been given a brand new start when you were in Christ. You can have a brand new slate right now. I love the Apostle Paul. Where sin increases, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Grace increased all the more. So where there's shame, where there's shame, where there's spots of shame, there's grace and there's love and there's hope for you. You need to trust that. You need to believe that. And really that comes down to this. You need to think great thoughts about God. You need to think great thoughts about God. You need to trust. Hear me on this. If you've blown it, if you've blown it, if you're feeling guilt, shame, regret in this area right now, you need to know that God loves you and God forgives you. And God sees you tonight right where you are and he says, I want all of it. I want you to throw all of it on me. Do you trust that? Do you trust that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that the cross is big enough to carry the guilt and the shame of your life when it comes to love, sex, and dating? If you do, you're taking a step in the right direction. And then second, it really, a lot of it, a lot of the relational dysfunction, a lot of the mistakes in regards to love, sex, and dating comes from the fact that you just don't believe that God is good. You don't believe that God has what's best for you. You think that your way is the best. You need to believe. You need to believe. You need to believe. As a middle schooler, as a high schooler, as a leader in the room, you need to believe that God is good. God is good. And God wants what's best for me. He does. He does. Essentially, it comes down to this. In your singleness, as you build a foundation, as you build a foundation, you need to be committed to experiencing great love. You need to be committed to experiencing the love of God, to experiencing the approval that comes from him. Guys, it breaks my heart that many of you, many of you do not feel secure in the love of God, and so you go, see, you go do things that deep down you know you shouldn't do, but you... you you, you haven't really tasted, you haven't really experienced the love of God, and so you're, you're thirsty, to be honest. And you do things that you regret. It breaks my heart. Girls, girls, it breaks my heart to think that you feel, to feel loved, to feel accepted, to feel approved, that you have to send pictures, that you have to date guys that you know you shouldn't date, that you think thoughts about yourself that lead to, 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 to regret and frustration and shame. And I believe that it all stems from the fact that we have not committed ourselves to not only coming to the edge every now and then and believing that God died for us, but we haven't committed to really experiencing the love that God has for us on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you do that, it changes everything. Your singleness matters. Your singleness matters. God wants to use you in your singleness to do more than you could ever imagine, whether you're 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 25, 28, 50 in the room. God wants to use you. God wants to use you, and don't waste it. Don't waste it. A lot hangs in the balance. God, we love you, and we... We... We, uh... We, uh, we trust you, and, and, and God, if we don't trust you, I pray that we can. I pray that you help us. Father, I love the authenticity and the story of the Gospels. I don't even know where it's at, but someone says, I believe, but just help me in my unbelief. I trust you, but help me in the areas where I don't trust you. And for many of us, we believe that you died. We believe that you rose from the dead. We believe that we're going to be in heaven one day. But there's a, there's a spot in our heart. There's a blind spot in our lives where we're like, we don't really know if we trust that you're good in the area of love, sex, and dating. We don't really know if we trust that your way is best. God, I believe we can all fall into that, that at times. And so help us in the areas of, of, of this, of this series. God, help us. Help us build a strong foundation that's going to that's gonna have the weight, that's going to be built in a way that it can hold up our love, sex, and dating lives, okay? Sex takes place after marriage. 
But God, help us in these areas. Father, I pray for good discussion. I pray that you lead us. I pray that we can be wise as leaders. I pray that as students, we can have conversations over the next three weeks that make a massive difference in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.